here with Greg Jennings. We're going viral, Greg. LeBron James put on a show last night, finishing with 33 points, 7 boards, 12 assists in a big Lakers win over the Atlanta Hawks. Then Lakers legend Kobe Bryant, the king, posted their courtside interaction with the caption, I'm just trying to continue the legacy you left behind in the purple and gold at the same time make you proud. Kobe doesn't make a lot of appearances at Staples for basketball games. I think the last one was the fifth or sixth game of the season last year. This year, he's he got some children's book coming well, out. Why do you think, it. Nick? Uh, listen, Kobe's listen. Kobe's moved on from basketball. Aside from coaching his daughter, who was there with him, the young lady next to him, I think her name is Gigi. She's an excellent player. Uh, he's he's trying to do films. He won an Oscar. He's I think he's trying to move on to the next phase of his life, so to speak. And his shadow looms so large that I think it would be tough when the Lakers were really bad in particular for him to be showing up a lot. Yeah, and I think he's taking a completely different approach from guys like Michael Jordan, who is always trying to ridicule or look down on the present stars in this league. Kobe is embracing these young guys and saying, look, this is our future. Uh, they have a lot to offer. Uh, well, I'm just laughing because Kobe always finds a way I to insert know. himself in the go talk with yeah. LeBron and Michael Jordan. So I, I don't it, know about uh, that. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think Kobe's happy for him to a degree. Yeah. I think he wants the to Lakers agree. to be oh, really good. I think he wants be LeBron a, to be to really good. With Kobe. I think yeah. that's where it's if it's like, if the MVP is coming down to the final week of the year and LeBron's in the running, I bet Kobe's vote, if he had one, would be Stop cast for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> and if the Lakers are in the conference finals against the Clippers, I think Kobe, if you were in attendance, you'd see him quietly fist pumping when the Clippers score. I I'm just saying. I, I can't prove that to be I true, agree. but I believe that to be true. All right, let's I feel like you back. Were it's time to recap Super 6 NFL Sonic. Nick, you picked four winners correctly. You nailed the scores in two of them. But what went so wrong for the Eagles? Listen, the Eagles' defense did its job. The offense could not do its job. And what went wrong with the Panthers' pick that's now off the board? The other one I got wrong was I believed in foolishly. I thought Kyle Allen could keep, keep the turnovers. Maybe do a hat trick. Yeah, Maybe you. just three just instead three, of four. four. I'm going to have a perfect day. I, I've, had, I've had. You feel, I, you feel it now. It's yeah, coming. perfect day on both sides. I'm gonna win the two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay. They say I'm ineligible. I, I'm my attorneys feel differently, and I'm gonna win Terry Bradshaw's two hundred fifty grand. And when I do, if if they don't pay me directly, I'm going to Terry's house. <laughs> Just letting you guys know. All I thought I was gonna have it yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. Right. He's got he's got a ranch somewhere, I assume, some palatial estate. I'm gonna roll up on him. Okay. All, All right. right. Before, Let me know how that goes. Okay. Before okay. I was gonna bring him with me. You're a big dude. Man, yeah, I was going to bring you with me. Terry's a big guy. You're a bigger guy. Hey, the only way I'm coming is if I can get in on the money. Oh, absolutely. Okay, 20%. Right. A little so. 20%. Right. A little 50 cool, stacks. Man. I'll be over here. No. <laughs> you wouldn't be a lot of help. No. You would tell him I was coming. Terry. <laughs> Nick's on his way. Before we kick off next Sunday, download the Fox Sports Super 6 app. Play for free for a chance to win $250,000 of Terry to be Bradshaw's Nick Wright's money. Money soon to be next money. Time for stories to start your morning. Last night, LeBron James dropped 33 and 12. No. Led the Lakers to a win over the Hawks. So the Lakers are now 11 and 2, which means they have the best record in you the don't NBA. Say. I do say. You also made us put it in the show. No, well, Nick, I, how listen, impressed? I don't make the news. How impressed are you by LeBron and the Lakers start? I'm going to guess very. I, I, yeah, I mean, LeBron's been. I didn't even expect this. Yeah. He's been the league MVP. He, uh, Giannis has a really strong case. Luke is playing great. But given the overwhelming team success and Anthony Davis is playing good but not overwhelming since that 40 and 20 game, mm -hmm. he's been the team MVP. And you felt like the King put on a little bit of a show for the Mamba last night, who was oh, rare in rare attendance for a Laker game alongside his young daughter. And so wonderful game for the Lakers. Tough, tough back-to-back -back nights for the Hawks in L.A. They get whooped yeah. by the Clippers and then get whooped by the Lakers. Well, listen, the Hawks shouldn't feel bad because they ain't going to be the only NBA team that has to go through that. Yes. But, I mean, as far as what's going on with the Lakers, I knew LeBron James was going to come back from those injuries last year with the vengeance, but I didn't think we were going to see this version of LeBron James, especially the guy on the defensive side of the court. And that's really how the Lakers are doing it. The best defensive rating in basketball leads to having the best record in basketball and then of course having two guys that belong in the conversation for being top five players in the world so yeah I, I expected the Lakers to be good but not this good this early all right time for us to go viral LeBron James had the dunk of the year Friday night that was pretty he then took to the gram to post 
a not as pretty caption, I thought. Get off the tracks when it's full of steam unless you want your loved ones dressed in all black. Hashtag washed king. Hashtag revenge season. Hashtag the kid from Akron. Hashtag strive for greatness. Hashtag James gang. Hashtag you're definitely not being petty. That last hashtag was not in there. But more importantly, Chris Canty, <laughs> what's my observation here going to be? Because it's not about year 17 of the greatest basketball player ever. What's it going to be about? Me and Lisa should have challenged LeBron James at the rim. LeBron wasn't the only one on Friday night with Twitter fingers because Nick Wright is DMing me. Oh, talking, I was. Talking about the dunk. In, Absolutely. Look at me, Lisa. Hey, man, you lose all dignity there. You, you're six foot ten, either jump. Or get out the way trying to take a weak sauce charge. Instead, that old man with the gray beard booms on your face. That was that he got exactly Didn't what he they deserved. Put the music to that highlight to Ludacris's move. Get move, out the way. <laughs> get out. Move, Bialita. Get out the <laughs> way. Right. Challenge. Right. Get out the way. Exact man. Bogdanovich had the best view of that of everybody. Just like how, how is he doing that year seventeen? Is that the, he's the greatest athlete in the history of humanity? So that probably adds to it. That probably helps. <laughs> We're ready to go anywhere. My agent, Jeff Nally, is ready to talk to any team. i interview with any team at any time. I've been ready. I'm staying ready. And I'll continue to be ready. Kenny, what was your reaction to everything that happened this weekend? I thought it was a bad look for all involved. It amounted to a PR stunt for both sides. It wasn't about trying to get Kaepernick a fair and equitable opportunity for employment. It was about both sides trying to protect their own interests. I thought they all had ulterior motives from the NFL's perspective. They're trying to protect against any liability in future litigation brought against them by Colin Kaepernick, you know, in, in defense of their position and him not having a job. What they're worried about is Cap dragging them back into court and saying that, you know what, because they had to settle the initial suit, they're retaliating against me by not giving me an opportunity to play when I'm clearly one of the best 100 quarterbacks in the world. From Kaepernick's standpoint, that's what he's trying to protect. That's why he didn't sign the waiver that the NFL had for him. I think they had some language in there that included some employment-related issues as well as the health waiver for the workout that he was scheduled to have which is why he changed the location and made it uh, you know, 45 minutes away from the Atlanta Falcons facility where only eight of the 25 scouts that were supposed to come down and watch him were able to, to actually get a look at him. But I mean, for, from Kaepernick's standpoint, I think he's more interested in being a modder than actually being out there on the football field because there are a couple of things in here that are hard to explain. First of all, the logistics of it, if you know that the NFL is going to have you sign a waiver, try to get that, that information earlier so that if they there is some disagreement that you can make an adjustment and you actually have time and the scouts that actually do want to come see you have an opportunity to do it. Changing it the day of, I mean, that's, that's a tough ask when all of these people are adjusting their schedules just to come and see you. And then showing up to that workout in a Kunta Kente shirt, I just, I, I, to me, it didn't seem like Cap was as concerned about putting his best foot forward for NFL teams. I think he was more concerned with sending a message. Well, he certainly is not going to sacrifice any of his principles in order to get back in football. He's made that clear. And I think that is one of the things that makes him so admirable, but it also has been one of the things that has kept him out of the league. That's obviously the case. From kneeling to everything since then, he has put principles ahead of profession at every stance, and to me, that's very, very honorable. But there are two major points on this, to me, that are more important than all of the other noise combined. And the first one is what we saw in that video and what the anonymous NFL exec who was quoted on this said, Colin Kaepernick still obviously can play. And if we want this to not be about politics, not to be about social justice, not to be about ulterior motives, can he play should trump everything else? Because I'm certain if it were in the other direction, it would. If all of the, quote, distractions, unquote, were removed, but and he wasn't wearing the T-shirt and, and he worked out, but he's throwing the ball into the dirt, then none of it matters. Despite the fact that he still clearly can play, there is still speculation in the hours and days since this has happened. Well, how much does he want it? Well, he wants it badly enough. How long has it been since he played, Jenna? 1,051 days? That's it. it. He wants it badly enough that he has worked out five or six days a week 
every week since then. He wants it badly enough that he has stayed in shape for this moment. Being able to throw a football like that and practicing that has no effective use in the real world aside from playing professional football. Mm -hmm. So he wants it badly enough to keep his skill level high enough if the opportunity ever were to arise. And that should be all that matters if we're being honest here. But it clearly isn't, which brings me to the second point here. Why does the onus continue to be put on the wronged party in this to make, to, to decide, okay, I'll, I'll relent on this. You guys want me to sign a waiver that is not the